Uh, uh, Terry Mills, I see. <laughs> yeah, hey, you should be quiet. I <laughs> can't, I just saw him. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. <laughs> you gotta hit the mute button here. So Go ahead, Rob. Take hey, Larry, <laughs> put, put the mute tape on her. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. How's everybody doing? Good. 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 All right, we're gonna jump into this one because I'm I'm excited about this one. This is. Uh, I've, I've watched this guy for the past, what, how long I've been here, eight, nine months, and it's been really fun to see the growth and see what he's done just in that time um, and just watch what he's building. So with that, our rock star agent live guest this morning is Mr. Terry Mills from Vestavia. Hey, Welcome, good sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are y'all? Good, how are you, buddy? Doing good, man. Just uh, as we say in church, honored to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm honored to have you here and thank you so much for your time and willingness to uh, come on and share. All right. No problem. Got it. Well, with that, so we got uh, right now, I think I see 49 from all of the different market centers in Birmingham. Plus we have some from Tuscaloosa as well. Okay. So some of these may not know you and your story. Okay. And let's, let's start with that. Okay. Where'd you come from? What'd you do before real estate and how'd you get into real estate? Yeah, so I'm uh, originally from, you know, the Birmingham area. Uh, went to McAdory High School, went to UAB, actually uh, played football my first two years there. And then when I realized I didn't have a chance of the NFL, I <laughs> let that go and focused on my, my degree. Ended up getting a, a degree in criminal justice. And uh, it's, it's crazy because I really had no intentions on doing that. However, um it was kind of a, a easy degree to get after three years of being in college i should say yeah um ironically i had a very successful career in it i um started off as a probation officer for a private probation company and then ended up uh being blessed enough to move up into management and then a regional manager um so i would be equivalent to uh, like kathy in the kw world so i had several offices that i was running between alabama and mississippi and I'm telling you that because uh, that's kind of what sparked the entrepreneur in me. Because what I realized was I was running the business and I was just running somebody else's business. Um, and so that's when I started seeking other, other businesses. Uh, my wife and I had a uh, janitorial service that we ran for two years. Um, so I would work my day job during the day and then middle of the night be cleaning buildings and cleaning toilets and all that fun stuff and then getting back up and doing it again. So we did that for like two years. Um, and finally, I just got burnt out everything and then uh, took my shot at real estate, started as a part-time agent. And as soon as I got my license, like two months later, uh, the, the um, job that I was working for folded, got laid off, and the janitorial service started folding as well. And so I was kind of forced into real estate full-time. And six years later, actually, this month, uh, my anniversary, six years, here I am. Nice. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Um, all right. So that's interesting. So you, you had two jobs prior to real estate. Why'd you pick yeah. real estate? I mean, what made you say, all right, I want to, I want to go get my real estate license and join the 5,400 other ones that are here. In Paris, you know? <laughs> well, here, here's the way I always describe it is it was a, uh, a sexy field, right? Like you could, this is the perception I had. You can make a lot of money, you can wear nice clothes and meet people and and, and just be on social media. So I just figured, why not try it? Uh, I was I was uh, really mistaken once I got into business. It's, it's a lot of hard work. People don't see the back work that goes into it. However, it was just something that was appealing to me and something I wanted to do. Very cool. All right, so you started it. Your plan was to originally work your full-time job, work this part-time mm -hmm. and kind of ease into it or something like right. that, right? Yeah, it was, it was honestly, man, it was just some vacation money. That's what I thought it was going to be. I wasn't really going to try to do it full-time. Okay. Honestly, I really didn't understand it. Yeah. Like, people see realtors, but we don't really know. We didn't know what realtors really do. And so I, I didn't know that you could technically be a, a business owner as a realtor. Nice, nice. Well, shoot, that's come for full circle and grown a little bit in six years, hasn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me about your first year. Um, how'd your first year go? And um, 
What'd you do in your rookie year? So, hold on, I keep, keep, keep getting phone calls. Sorry about that. All right. So, um, I got my license in June, like I stated. So, from June 2015 to December 2015, so one house. And that was actually my brother and sister in law. So, it really doesn't even count. <laughs> they was waiting for me to pass the daggone test to buy a house for me. So, I only really had one deal my first six months. However, uh, my first full year, which was 2016, ended up winning Rookie of the Year, and I uh, sold 41 homes. Nice. Yeah. So it was. You so know, wait, it was, wait a minute. So one from one home, your original six months, mm -hmm. to 41 homes the following 12. Yeah. Yeah. And I want somebody to just sink in, and then because you know I'm gonna ask the next question in a second. Just let that okay. sink in for a second. One home in six months, mm -hmm. 41 homes over the next 12. Right, right. All right, you know the next question, right? What's the next question? How did you do that? <laughs> it's funny because right before we got on the, on the call, uh, Jennifer was talking about that. Basically trying to tell agents, it takes time, right? So the activities that you're doing today may not show up for 30, 60, 90, even 120. You don't really know, right? But they will show up. And so although I closed one home that first six months, I was getting a lot of traction. I was meeting with people every day, going on listing appointments, but people wasn't ready, you know, save money, need to get my credit right, you know, need to get ready for my house on the market. So the activities were happening, but as far as closed deals was one. So everything that I was doing from June until the end of the year just showed up that next year and one closing, two closing, three closings, and it was rocking and rolling. That right there is huge. You know, people come in, and I think I had this conversation a little bit yesterday with Wes and Joy, who is up there as well. And you just said that it's like, we don't know, we can't control the time frame. Right. What we can control are the activities. That's that how you control. Some people are going to get lucky and get things in 30, 60, 90 days. And then Sometimes it, it's not, and sometimes it's going to take that six months to do it if you right. do the activities and stay with it. So that's, right. I'm glad you said that because, you know, we hear, yeah. we hear so many agents come on or so many agents talk about, oh my gosh, you know, I've got this in my first 30 days and I'm just rocking it and all kinds of mm -hmm. things, right? And right. the reality right. is, is that's not, that's not necessarily true. No. And, and, you know, I'll tell you this, man, I'm sorry not to cut you off. But, but okay. I don't want to jump past this. Getting laid off was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Because I didn't have any other options. I had nothing to do. <laughs> All right, so, talk about that. Because that's got to be a massive mind shift, right? Because you went is. from trying to do extra spending money to all of a sudden, you didn't have a choice. This is it. Like, yeah. where else are you going to go? Because because the job I got laid off from, I, had a, I, was, I was on salary, yep. worked from home, right? No matter what happened, first and 15th, I was going to get paid. Life was good. And so where was I going to find that again with a criminal justice degree? I didn't want to go to law school, you know. And so I had to tell myself, this is it, Terry. Like, this is all you got, bud. Like, yeah. throw, throw it in. Throw it in. So I, I would tell people, get uncomfortable, as they say. Be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Like, I remember taking bowl for the first time, and they was telling us we had to make phone calls. Like, are you serious? I gotta talk to people. But when you, you know, when that mortgage is due and that car note is due, you'll figure it out, you know? And so I, that's why I always tell people getting laid off was the best thing for me because it forced me into real estate and, and to do things that I was uncomfortable doing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's huge as well. So when when you figured out that your other job was folding and that um that real estate was it, right? Right, right. Right, right. How much fear and panic set in at that point in time? Oh man, I was super scared. But the but the fear is what motivated me. Yeah. Right? Because nobody wants to be considered a failure, right? And we're our worst critic. Nobody else probably would have said that. But in my eyes, I was like, I can't go from you know being successful here, here, here to now trying to figure out where my next meal is going to come from. And so you got to find some kind of motivation, whether it's your family, kids, or whatever it is to force you into this business. Cause it's not easy. It's not, you know, it's a, it, it is strictly a, 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 a person to person business. No matter what we do on social media, or whatever, it still boils down to talking to people, right? And so you have to be okay with that. And so I just got to the point where it's the worst that's gonna happen. I mean, I'm already not making money. 
So <laughs> they can't do nothing but tell me no. <laughs> and so once you find that, whatever the motivation is inside, use that and I promise you, the business will become easy to you at some point. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now let's get into that, right? Okay. So 41 homes in right. a real rookie year. Where'd it come from? How'd you get them? What do you do? Where's your business come from? Yeah, so um, right now I'm pretty... I'm, I'm pretty much database and, and referral, um, but the foundation of my business was strictly social media. That's all I had. That was all I had. Um, and I like to tell people this because people look at me now and say, oh, you're so comfortable on social media. But the crazy thing is I didn't even get on Facebook until I got my license. So I wasn't that guy. Like I was the one guy out of my whole circle of friends that would be sitting there and like, why y'all posting where we at? Like, we don't have to tell everybody we're eating here. They don't need to know we're at the bar. It's nobody's business. I was that guy. But now if you look at it, I'm the main one. Like, hey, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this picture. Because what I realized was the power of social media, right? Yeah. So I'll give you a great example. One day, uh, me and some guys were just hanging out, eating somewhere. And somebody posted a picture, like, hanging out with my brothers. It's been a long time. And it was like 80 likes and 20 comments. And I'm always thinking business. I'm like, okay, so if we can use it for stuff that doesn't matter, right? How powerful would it be to use it in business? And so that was my whole mindset. So what I would do is everything that I was doing as far as real estate related, I would post it. So if I'm meeting with clients, I'll ask them to take a picture in the, in the lobby with me, just saying, hey, just met with this beautiful family. They're on the way to being homeowners. Uh, if I was doing open house for somebody, I wouldn't just post the open house flyer. I would post me putting out flyers or me standing by the sign actually working. And so what people would see was the real job. And so the clients that I were getting said, if nothing else, we know your work. Yeah. Like I wasn't just taking professional pictures and just standing there saying, call me. No, they saw me actually doing things. And so that's all people really want. I mean, especially first time buyers, they just want somebody they know is going to work for them. They know you don't know everything. However, you appear to be hungry and and like you want it. And so honestly, man, I started with that and then it just it just spiraled. They would tell people and then they would tell people and they would tell people. And I asked for referrals. Who else do you know? And there you go. All right. So some gold in that. And I'm gonna I wanna dive into that a little bit. First question, personal page, business page, both combination. All personal. All personal. You guys hear people, that, by the way? People, people want to know you, right? They, they understand you got a business, but they want to know who, who are you, right? And so here's my main thing. Uh, family, people love the family pictures. My wife always tells me, you're going to stop using us. I said, no, I'm not. You want me to keep paying these bills? <laughs> people love family. Um, put some recreational stuff in there. Like, what do you do for fun? You know, people want to know the organic you. And so that's kind of how it went. Nice, nice. Yeah, and that one boxes. <laughs> Hold on, let me find out. I'll find that and we'll, we'll mute that for a second. All right, so on that note, so you said um, all of it personal. Do you even have a business page? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. I hit you. Un, un, where are you? Wait a minute. There you are. Unmute yourself. There we go. There you go. Perfect. All right. So okay. say that again. So do you even have a business page? I do. Um, but it's pretty boring. I mean, I, I don't think I've posted on it in months, to be honest. I have one just because people search us. Yeah. And I use it to boost posts. But the main thing is my personal, like it's the real life. This is me page. I love it. All right. So let's look at this. And knowing knowing that if you've got you're talking to 50 plus agents that are in mo for the most part, new to the business, right? right? Right. What do they start with today? What do they go out with and say, all right, I'm going to be active on Facebook. I'm going to mm -hmm. start posting things. Right. What would you do in their position? Um, honestly, it's a little different now. Yeah. Um, everybody's doing it on social media now. It's a little bit different from when I started six months ago. But I will tell you this. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you an example of what Jennifer Tuma told me the day that I signed up. She said, she, she asked me, she said, so you played sports, you're an ex-athlete. I said, correct. She said, anytime somebody sees one of your coaches out, what do they know them as? A coach. 
we know they're a coach. We don't know what position. We don't even really know what they do, but we know they're a coach. She said, however you can tell that story, that's what you need to do every day. So you need to be able to walk into a place and people say, he or she sells real estate. And so that was the mind shift for me. I said, I got it now. She said, it's, it's not a right or wrong way to do it. You just got to find a way to tell your story. And what I realized about social media is just all about who tells the story the best. That's all it is. Because I know a lot of agents that sell way more real estate than me. <laughs> way more real estate than me. But you wouldn't know it. Yeah. My thing is, I'm not going to be a secret agent because it's free marketing. <laughs> yeah. So I would, I would tell uh, a new agent to kind of just start with what I just said. Just start with posting what you're actually doing, right? So I remember I actually started on Instagram while I was taking my pre-license. Okay. I would post what I was learning about each night in class. And I would I, I came up with the hashtag realtor in the making. So people knew what I was about to do, right? Now there's some uncomfortable in that because if I failed and didn't pass the test, now I'm told the world I'm gonna be a realtor. So I take that accountability for myself. But I would say to new agents, I would say to the new agents, God. Ash. Ashley. I'm sorry. God. All right, you're good. Okay. Um, but I would say to new agents, start posting your activities. I would start posting about being in coaching, right? This is what I learned today in coaching. Like Whatever you got to offer, start putting that out there. Um, give nuggets on the real estate market. You know, uh, videos are great now. People love videos. Short 20 second, 30 second videos about whatever's going on. Be the be the realtor that gives information. I think that's the most important part. Don't just do cute, cute pictures. Like that's cool or whatever, but you're not giving them anything. So I, I would start with that. Give them something to 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 make you stand out. And you said Instagram. So you're using Instagram as well to do the same thing. Yep. Instagram and Facebook. Those are my main two, two Those platforms. Two. Okay. When, so when you, when you do that, when you do your videos, do you ask for business on your videos or do you wait for likes and sort of engage when somebody asks questions or. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. So here's what I did. Um, I would post something that would require some kind of comment or, or engagement as they call it, right? But what people don't see is I'm actually uh, direct messaging people versus putting it in the thread. So part of my lead gen literally every day would be to direct message 50 people. So people will walk by my office and see me with my feet up and like I'm playing on Facebook, but I'm actually lead gen. I say, hey, I'm Terry Mills. I just, you know, looking to buy or sell, call me. The best way to do it is um, once you have a closing, and you tag your client, all of their friends and family, introduce yourself to them and oh, say, hey, I'm the agent that helped John Smith. If you're looking to buy a sale, call me. That is golden. It's instant. It's instant because the notoriety is there because you just helped their family. Member. That's right. So you don't have to go through all that anymore. So a lot of times we're just leaving business right there on our phones and don't even realize what to do with it. That's fantastic because you probably posted videos of that family you just helped. Right. As yep. well, plus pictures and Mm -hmm. Act them in it. Yeah. And so once they get the message, when they can see you in the picture with their family members, like, oh, okay. And then what are they going to do? Call the family member yep. and say, hey, is Terry good? How was your experience? And so you got to give them experience now. But <laughs> Wait a minute, you have <laughs> to actually follow through and do a good job. Yeah. Right? Okay. You actually got to do a good job. Well, that right. doesn't... I got that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that, that was it, man. So I honestly didn't really start spending any money on marketing or anything like the last two years. My first few years in the business, that's all I did. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Um, and now you have built that in six years to give me sort of the makeup of your team now. What's that look yeah, like? Yeah, so it's uh, we have a full-time admin and it's four of us as agents. Um, and it's cool because my team is pretty much just, it's like a leadership. It's not like the traditional I'm giving you leads and it, it, it's it's more so a mentoring program of me giving you what to do every day, kind of like the stuff that I'm talking about yeah. uh, and teaching people how to get business from their database, which is the business that you really want because it's it's a lot more organic and it's a lot more uh, loyal, I would yeah. say. Um, and so, you know, I've gotten into that and uh, 
last year got into flipping houses. So that's kind of like my new business. Um, so that's been good. And um, it's been great, man. But like I said, just all this started as a part-time agent. Multiple streams of income, right? Man, that's the key. You got it. That Absolutely. is definitely the key. That is so definitely the key. You, did, you took on a little venture, what, last year? And it was finalized, what, a couple months ago, right? What are we talking about first? Your book. Okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably have some other ones in there too. But like, what are we talking about? Tell me about that. Tell me about yeah, what man. that is, and and tell everybody here about your book. And if you've got one, hold on. Oh, oh okay. yeah, I do. I got one right here. Look at that. Here we go, Look people. That. Um, so la- I've always for the last two years, people have told me, "Hey, you should write a book. T- tell your story." Blah 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 blah. I'm like, first of all, who in the world wants to hear my story and want to read my book? Right? Like, no. Second, when am I going to have time to write this book that I'm supposed to be writing for everybody? Well, if you guys remember, um, beginning of last year, this thing called COVID. Golly. <laughs> Your phone's getting blown up, Jerry. Come on. Well, you, you see how much it rings. Um, this, this, this thing called COVID came and kind of forced us all into quarantine for a few weeks. And so I said, well, if you want to ever write a book, now is the time. And so um, last spring started it and uh released it in september and um and basically nobody cares work hard is the title of the book and it's really about motivation so it just talks about things i went through from all the way from high school all the way up to now yeah. personal and business and 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 the theme is basically get over it keep going yeah. right like we all have trials and tribulations everybody can sit back and tell you why you can't be successful but at the end of the day you're going to make a decision either stay there or get over it and so it was cool, man. You know, I never walk around just saying I'm, you know, author or whatever, but I guess I am. I have a book. Um, yeah. Yes, you are. But you know what's cool? This is, and this is to the new agents, this is just an example of the platform you have selling real estate. Like, don't limit yourself to just selling houses. Like, there's so many other avenues that you can do with this and and bless people and motivate people and bring people along and put people in place. And, you know, one of the the, the biggest things for me is now to see like other people who I brought in being successful. Now that is so rewarding to me. You know what I mean? It's not about money and all, you know, boards and all this. You can look and see, man, I remember when they just started, they didn't have a clue. Yeah. Now they're killing it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's, you guys understand, but real estate is a, is a great field. And if you, if you really take it serious and work hard, it could, it can blow your mind where it can take you. It's not easy though, is it? No, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it is rewarding. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where can we get a copy of the book? It's actually on Amazon. Woohoo! There it's you on go. Amazon. Now, we'll tell you this. Yep. When you type in the title, Nobody Cares Work Harder, you have to go to the second page. <laughs> I'm not on the top page because um, there's a lot of merchandise on there. But, um, yeah, it's on there. It's on Maybe there. we can, we can uh, hey, Janie, since you asked that, find that. Let's get that link and let's post it in here in the chat. Let's see if we can put Ooh. that on the first page. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. All right. I'm going to open it up if it's okay with you. We've got some questions uh, out there. So I see a couple of them in the chat, but you guys come on and and ask. Um, I see Sherry Pruitt with one as well. So take yourself off mute and ask Terry questions. Hey, Terry. Hey, good morning. Hey, um, I've heard your story a couple of times and I love it. And the book is on my list uh, to read. Um, And I feel like I've heard as far as the Facebook post, um, business page, personal page. um, I've heard have both. And now um, you do most of yours on your personal page. Um, So when you're out with friends or whatever, how much are you plugging in? Hey, I'm with Keller Williams. How much are you plugging in on your personal post? Um. A lot. It just depends on the setting and who I'm talking to, I guess, right? So being with Keller Williams definitely has its advantages. Um, but the crazy thing is most people think T Mills Realty Group is its own brokerage, um, just because of the way I brand it, you know. Um, so I will say the personal is what gets the business, but I think the business page is kind of the notoriety of your business, if that makes sense. Like when somebody searches T Mills Realty Group, they will pull up the business page. You see Terry Mills, though you see more of the organic everyday things that are going on. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, thank you. 
Okay. Okay. No problem. And and that's actually a good question because you know you hear um, about oh do your business page do your business page do your business page right. But and and you've seen the results of focusing on your personal page. Right. And I think and you probably do this for a reason too is because your personal page is free. Exactly. <laughs> definitely free and so the business page po boosted posts are great don't don't let me shy away from that because i can get i can get a lot of leads from boosted posts right um but you can end up spending some money now if we're talking 30 40 50 dollars not a lot of money so it just depends on what your budget is and where you are um but for me the personal was more so the organic and mainly because i could kind of tie uh like connections to those people on my personal like either a past client, friend, or family. So it was just a lot easier to convert those people versus complete strangers that might come from my business page. Fantastic. Jennifer Smith, what you got? Okay, so I guess my question is, because I have a personal and a business, and what I typically do is post on my business and then I share to my personal. Mm -hmm. Mainly the reason I did that was for safety. I have five children ranging in the ages of five to 20. And right. I want to make sure that I keep them safe um, because there's a lot of predators out there. And so I'm just curious, do, is your pe personal page public or do you share mm -hmm. publicly certain things and privately? Because I've done that as well on my personal page. There's certain things that I'll share publicly and then I'll keep certain things private especially right. anything that has to do with our location. I'm, I'm probably more, more paranoid about it than some people are, but. No, you, you're um. just smart. <laughs> you're just smart. So there are ways that you can uh, kind of filter what post to who, different groups. Uh, I'm just strictly public, but I, if I was you, continue to do what you're doing, right? Because I will say there is some, some kind of transparency and, uh, uh, let me say this, being on social media has good and bad parts, right? It has some good, but you gotta be willing to take the bad as well. So it is weird because everybody kind of knows not only me, but they know my kids, they know my wife. And so it's like, you gotta be cautious because everybody's not your friend. Everybody's not happy for you, right? And so like, it is very weird. We can go places and people will literally know my whole family. Hey, Tequila, hey, Trace, hey, Tay. I'm just like, I've never met this person today in my life. So, yeah, to, to, to answer your question, I think you're being smart with it, um, just because it, it, a lot comes with being out there on social media. So I will say, don't be too paranoid, but what I will say is just, just kind of watch what you're posting regardless, right? Like, a lot of times I know people that will, they will post vacation after they come back, right? So like say, we're in Florida for the weekend, yeah, that was last weekend, <laughs> people don't know that. So sometimes you can be strategic with how you're posting as well. I actually got uh, put in check by my grandmother about that. <laughs> she said, stop telling everybody where you are. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's what I do too now. I yeah, I don't post things, that trips or anything until after we're back. Right, yeah. right. So you can be strategic with what you put out there. And I'm going to tell you, people don't pay attention. I literally would post the same videos like every six months. And I still have people say, oh, man, that's awesome. And like, I've posted it every six months for the last two years, and people don't know. So so don't think people care that much. One thing I want, I realized about social media, it's in their brain for, like, 10 seconds. Like, as they're scrolling on, you know, it's so you can you can kind of manipulate it however you want to with your post. Yeah. Beth Jones. No? You're off? What you got? Go, go, to, go to Wes first. He had his right. hand. Wes, Go. Oh, first of all, Terry, thanks for the encouragement today. And um, just uh, Facebook, um, I keep seeing, you know, where they um, limit how many people see your page and people post these things to say, go back and put this on there and whatever. Any secrets to more people see in your personal page or just let it go? I don't really know the secrets because I'm, I'm dealing with that now. Like I'm maxed out with friends and all that good stuff. And so they're trying to regulate what people are doing from a business standpoint. That's why I said in the beginning, it's different than it was five, six years ago, because they realize people are getting smart and say, hey, man, this is a free engine. So I haven't learned all the tricks of the trade. I will tell you this, though. Um, the more people that you can have campaigning with you, 
meaning like family members, that will help. Um, so like my wife posts a lot of my stuff. So they don't, her, her coworkers think she's in real estate. She's never sold a house in life. However, she can reach different people that I can't reach right on her platform. And so I think that kind of helps sometimes too, if you can have people help you with your posts. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. I'll give you a real a tip on that one, by the way, too. Um, okay. So, Terry, you and you've got this because you got 5,000 friends, right, on your thing. Right. So you get that birthday list every morning. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, you know, yeah. Go through and say happy birthday, tag them in the birthday, and then send them a direct message that says, hey, just wanted to say happy birthday here because then they respond and they like, and all of a sudden you start okay. showing up higher on people's posts. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Thank you. Let me write my notes down for today. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Beth Jones. All right. So, Terry, thank you for the friend up. Terry had to delete somebody so that he could add me as a friend. I, I waited four I years it. for that, by the way. I knew. I knew. Um, wait a minute. Is that why I'm still pending on Terry's? Oh, yeah, probably. Oh, <laughs> see, he I see. I'm not special. To, that. That's all right. He had to get rid of a friend to add me. So, I'm grateful. I love um, you, Beth. Terry. Uh, I have seen how you work, um, for lack of a better term, how you work a room at events like Family Reunion and Mega Camp. I think it's worth touching on with these people the value of networking. Yeah, be, it kind of goes back to what I said in the beginning. This is still, as Jennifer says, a belly to belly business, right? Like social media, all it does is put you out there, but you still have to seal the deal with who you are, right? Um, so I'll give you a great example. When uh, my first, yeah, my first full-time assistant was my sister-in-law. And it was cool because she is friends with a lot of the people, like she, she was personally friends with a lot of people that I was friends with on social media. And so she would kind of give me feedback. She would say, you need to start going out more. You need to start, you know, going to events, going to parties, letting people know who you are. She said, everybody sees you, but everybody doesn't know you. And I was like, wow. Here I am thinking I'm just doing myself justice with posting. And she was like, yeah, people like, they don't know if you're approachable. Should I call you or not? And so I, I, I so it kind of changed my thinking, right? So now when you go somewhere, it's like, you got to go with a purpose. Okay, I'm going to meet three people. I'm going to add people to my database. And that's what really works because so you introduce yourself, then they'll say, oh yeah, I have seen you on Facebook, right? So that may be a lead that you never would have gotten if you hadn't opened, if you didn't open your mouth. So I agree. Networking is still the basis. I mean, think about it. What did people do before Facebook? Like real estate was still getting sold. And so it still goes back to the basics. So absolutely, that, that, that is the that's the one thing I think technology can't replace. Hopefully they can. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. All right, guys, um, it is 931. Terry, thank you so much. Oh, man, this was we fun, are, man. I appreciate it. We are blessed to have you and thank you so much for sharing. This has been fantastic. Um, you guys go buy Terry's book. Let's get him on page one so that Ooh. we do that. Um, we, we, we just ordered two copies. So Janie wanted her own, so she didn't want to. Share thank you. One. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right, guys, uh, Terry Mills, thank you. If you have one last thing to say to them and leave them with what you, what would it be? I would tell you that nobody cares work harder. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Everybody say thank you, Terry. Terry, thank you very much, guys. It is DPA Thanks, time. Terry. Remember, Terry talked about the activities. Go do your activities. Go do your dollar productive activity. Terry, thank you again. We're great. All right, man. Y'all be great. Awesome. All right, people, make it a great day.